Thanking Jesus. Hallelujah. This is your host, Elder Anton Seals, and we are going live. And I am so grateful, grateful to God for what he's doing in our lives. Grateful to God for another day. Grateful to God for one more opportunity to get it right. Hallelujah. How many of you know we need the more of Jesus? We need a touch from our Lord and our Savior. I come to tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing, seen and unseen, and be glorified and be exalted. And so I pray in the name of Jesus, this is your host, Elder Anton Seals, on the Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Teaching on the Tabernacle. This is the Tabernacle of Worship, the Tabernacle. As we study the Word of God on the Bible class this week, every Tuesday at 2 o'clock, we're on, and we'll be finishing up. Uh, this book on the tabernacle before the end of the year. But I want to share with you today, just in prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, I continue to lift up all of those that are going through trials and tribulations, all those who are faced with different dilemmas and struggles in their lives. God, do it for your glory. Lord, even as I have multitasked and learned to, to do all that I can to keep this podcast going, Lord, I pray for your intervention. I pray for your wisdom. I pray for your godly knowledge and understanding of your word to be a better teacher of it, oh God. I pray for the resources. I pray for people to join and be a part of this ministry, God. I thank you for what's already taking place, and we praise your holy name for all of those that have sown and to take time out to ask questions or to join the class. I thank you for Brother Clarence Brown. We want to wish his wife a happy birthday, and let me not forget to mention my own wife, uh, Elder Jennifer Seals. We thank God for her and lift her up right now in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for traveling and mercy. Thank you for being with her, guiding her, keeping her mind in your perfect peace, oh God, and come against the hand of the enemy. We bless her in the name of Jesus for all that she's doing for so many other people. Lord, I thank you right now. And we count it done for your glory, God. Now this word, as we come forth on the teaching of the, the candle, that you are the light of the Lord, of, the, of, the, of God, you are, you are his sheep, hallelujah. And God is speaking to us in this world today. And so we just want to thank you for being on. And this is Elder Anton Seals of AJS Ministry. Hallelujah. Giving God all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory because we serve an awesome God. We serve a God who knows the beginning and the end of everything that we're doing, everything that, that we're going through right now. God, I thank you for it. I'm, I'm looking at the screen and I'm seeing some duplications, but I figured it out. Thank you, Holy Spirit for what you're showing me. Uh, I think I got disconnected. Ah, oh, Jesus, have mercy. Where did it go? Lord, help me, help me, help me with this. I think we got cut off, uh, Brother Clarence. Clarence Brown is on with us. There it is. I see him. There it is. All right, we're there. We didn't get cut off. Hallelujah. This is Elder Seals. We're going live. We are live, and we thank God uh, for what the Lord is showing us and teaching us in his word this morning, as we as we go forth in this lesson, I'm going to be sharing uh, not a PowerPoint, but I'm going to share with you the book, the, the actual um, hardcover of the book, the hard copy of the book. And we're on page 201. We've been talking about uh, the Holy Spirit and the three um, pieces of furniture in the Holy Court. I want to define something for you as we go into the outer court, the Holy Court, and the Holies of Holies. When you go into the book of Hebrews in the ninth chapter and you go into different other books of the Bible, uh, you'll find that it only references two courts. Um, and so when Solomon's court was built, they only dealt with the two courts, and that was the holy, the outer court represented where the animals were sacrificed. But when you get to uh, the book of uh, Hebrews, it does not mention the outer court as it's defined. It just says the inner sanctuary and the outer sanctuary. What it's referring to is that because of the grace of Jesus, because of Jesus dying on the cross, he bore all the sins of the world representing the outer court, the outer nature of man, the sin nature of man. He took that upon him for himself. But when we come into the house of the Lord and what we're going to discover today, and I discovered some new things today, 
um, and, and reading and doing some extra reading to share with you that the golden pieces of furniture that we're covering today, and I don't think we'll get through all three of them, but the golden menorah, which is the golden candlestick, the golden table of showbread, um, and also the gold altar of incense. And so I want you to know also that all the wood that that was used was called Acadia wood or uh, uh, shittim wood. It, it, it was a stubborn, hard, firm wood that that would stand against um, all elements, and it was also covered with pure gold. They had crafted uh, and great craftsmen that were trained. Uh, the, and just continue to carry forth the, the the command of God that was given to Moses. And so every time they had to replace anything, and I'm, I don't read anywhere in the Old Testament, I've not seen anywhere uh, where anything had to be rebuilt, <laughs> hallelujah, or reconstructed. I, I didn't see anything in, in my studies. That doesn't mean that it's not there. I just haven't seen where any of the tables, any of the, the uh, crowns around the Ark of the Covenant uh, or, or the Ark itself had to be rebuilt. I, I don't see anywhere where the candle had to be remade. I, I just don't see it where the altar was. Re I, I'm sure over time there were things that they did, but there's nothing in the scripture that tells us so everything that and so what does that have to do with our lives well the the golden candlestick represents uh the light of the world it represents jesus being the light and if you understand the context of the outer court and the holy court and the holies of holies that we've been talking about this holy place where you now are the priests hallelujah you're the priest and the king lowercase p lowercase k you are the 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 persons that god has given you uh, an anointing, a quickening of his Holy Spirit. You were born in his image and his likeness, but because of the sins of Adam and Eve, we know that we fall short of his glory, and, and we're born into the sin, iniquities of sin because of Adam and Eve. But that's the outer court that we now have Jesus who, who died for us, but symbolically, Jesus represents uh, the blood shedding uh, historically, that means that Jesus gave his life, the, the rams and the, all that were offered up as sacrifices was given, but now we have Jesus, so you don't have to put anything on that altar. You now bring yourself as a living sacrifice to God, not on the altar per se, but as a sacrifice of giving of your time, your talents, and your service, and becoming obedient to the teaching of this word. It represents, uh, and so the candle represents light, and God is the light. Hallelujah. Jesus represents the light. You are the candle of the Lord. You are children of the candle of the Lord. And so the table of the showbread represents the bread of life. The table of showbread represents the bread of life. And it also represents um, provisions. Uh, provisions manna from heaven. God made a way that he rained down manna from heaven. Uh, and, and so he gave us manna from heaven, but he also gave us quail. And so there was bread and meat. But the bread here is representing this, the living bread is the word of God. Eat of this bread and you'll hunger no more. The art of the altar of incense is the place that we go to prayer. It represents in each one of these uh, tables that were made in the uh, holy court. The only light in the holy court, the only light in the holy court was the candlestick. The candlestick represents the light. The table of the showbread represents the bread. And so in today's world, what that represents is you must come into the presence of God in order to get fed in order to get clarity on the purpose or discover your purpose that God has a plan for you. Because we live in the darkness of this world. Our minds represent the darkness, the evil, the anger, the jealousy, the unforgiveness, the greed, the, the desire for more and never being sad. That's the natural mind. And so the candle, the light of God, represents, uh, in this case, is representing 
uh, the presence of the light of God in the darkness of our times, that there's a light of God, that you are the candle of the Lord. And how do you get the oil or how do you keep your lamp burning? How do you keep it trimmed? How do you, well, it, we don't have candles anymore in our homes like we used to. Some people do. Uh, but we have electricity, and most people flip, flip a switch. There are people, and let us not be uh, uh, high-minded, there are people who are less fortunate in certain countries or in countries that are in ruin, like in Ukraine, that they're living by candles now because circumstances switched, they changed because of the evil that's in the land. And so we, we see this happening, but the presence of God, the light of God is still present. And so the candle represents, in other words, the light of God that's shining, the light of God, the spirit of God that's in you. And you need that light so that the priests in the old tabernacle, they needed that light in order to do the work in uh, the holy court, because in the holy court, unlike outside, they had no windows. Outside was not closed in. The outer court at that time was made in the outside. It was made uh, in the open atmosphere with white uh, sheets all the way around represent coming into a holy place then, coming into a place of sacrifice, coming into the east gate, which is the way, the truth, and the light. You're just entering it into to bring yourself as a living sacrifice. So the bread of life represents eating of the word that he enlightens you, that he strengthens you, that your candle may flicker and at times your faith may, the candle, your faith, your faith may feel like the wick is flickering. The faith is the seed of God. It's the word of God. It's the all of God. It's the presence of God. And so the golden altar is a place that was set aside right in front of the veil that had been rent by uh, the sacrifice of Jesus when he died. He rent the veil. As he left the body, uh, the spirit left his body, he rent the veil from top down, representing the power of God that, that cut that thick veil from the top down to let us know that it was not man, but this is of God, that you now have a right. You have a right to come before God. And so the, the golden altar of incense, the golden altar of incense is a place of prayer. And, and we're going to get into that, but this is the place of prayer. And each of these tables, the table of the showbread, the table of the altar of incense, also had four legs and it also had four corners, which represents that the word of God is going to be all over the world. Hallelujah. It covers the uh, uh, circumference of the entire world. So we're going to get into this, uh, this, this, this. John 15 and the scripture says and confirms that Jesus is a true vine. So when you look at the candlestick and you look at how it's made, that it represents an almond. It uses almonds to represent not only the life of God, but almonds were are the first fruits or the first flowers that bloom. And so it also also represents the light and the hope of Christ. And I'm going to share more with that right now uh, as we get into this lesson and, and get into what the candlestick uh, really represents. Hallelujah. So we thank God for this opportunity to share with all of you as we go now to sharing the screen. But I thank God for all of you that are listening, that are on with me. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to go up a little bit here and take you to the altar, to excuse me, to the tabernacle where we have this uh, candle of the Lord. Uh, the candle of the Lord is the light of God that's shining in you. Hallelujah. And I got to scroll down some here. Uh, but we're getting to this place where we want you to understand. We talked last week about the coverings over the tabernacle and how it was uh, made and purified and cleansed and kept. And so now we're going into uh, the, the, the menorah. The menorah is called the menorah, made out of 75 pounds, 75 pounds of pure gold. And, and so I do want us to read the scripture, the scripture text uh, today uh, is coming out of um, 
Exodus 25, and we'll share that in just a minute. But I want you to know that this 75 pounds of pure gold that was hammered into a form, all the instructions as we read Exodus 25, uh, I'm going to read 31 to 40 if you have your Bible, uh, Exodus 35, um, 20, excuse me, 25 to 31 to 40. The candlestick had six branches that joined in the middle of a shaft. There was a centerpiece of shaft, the centerpiece of the shaft. And each of the lamp bowls uh, were made, uh, out of, all of this was made out of gold. And each of the stems, three on one side and or branches on the other side, but they were fastened together in the shape of almonds. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But the candlestick provided the only means of light. It symbolically represents many pieces, but one light, the oneness and the spirit of God, one body, one Christ. And so the, the candlestick was composed of the shaft, which is the main portion, portion of it with the base, six branches and ornaments or bowls that represents flowers and knobs, 66 different pieces, but it was also these almonds that were used uh, to represent life, to represent that God is watching and seeing that it's going to bring forth new life, hallelujah. And so we want to reverence that as we teach it today and, and just continue to ask the Lord uh, to give us clarity of purpose in this lesson that you'll grow to understand. You are the candle of the Lord and you need to eat of this word. And so the angel represents the pastors. Listen to this. And so when we read Revelations 1 and 12 and through 20, Revelations 1, 12 uh, through 20, Revelations 1, 12 through 20, and Revelations 4 and 5, it reveals that the golden candlesticks, the seven lamps, the voice that spoke with him. This is John, as they were talking about John. John sees a vision, and he hears a voice. And this voice is likened that uh, to hearing the, the presence of God. So the voice that spoke with him, uh, the one that was standing in the midst of the candle was Jesus. <laughs> the presence of God is always in the light. Hallelujah. In the darkness, you'll find Jesus. Huh? He, he overcomes your darkness and gives you light. And so the, the, this is likened to uh, the Son of Man. Uh, this foreshadows the coming of the Messiah, the anointed one, Messiah, meaning the anointed one, uh, the Son of Man, the image of Jesus is, is upholding the right hand. And so these seven candles also represent the seven stars, and the seven stars are also represent the seven angels, or the angels in this case represent the presence of the priests, the pastors, the angels represent the pastors of the churches that were going to be established across the country. And, and so that was in Asia and Asia Minor. This is all points to Jesus, but Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and the light of God shineth through him. Amen. Jesus is the light that's shining in the darkness, and he separates darkness as he calls it light. Hallelujah. Second Peter 1 and 9, Second Peter 1 and 9, this, this says that the shaft is also symbolic of the true vine. And believers, that's you and I, we are the branches ah, and, and that abide in the shaft. And so as believers, we must abide in Jesus. And that takes us to beginning to understand, and Ephesians says 5 and 8 through 10, Ephesians 5, 8 through 10, for ye were once in darkness, but now you are the light of the world. Walk as children of, do you hear that? Walk as children of light. That's, that's you. And so, Seals, what are you saying to us? I'm sharing with you that this light that, that's in the Old Testament, that represented the only light in the uh, holy court that was dark, had no windows, it was covered. And so there was no light in there. The only light represents the light of God in the menorah. In the midst of the candle, we find that there was a man by the name of Jesus. We know this because we believe by faith in the power of God's word. 
And so you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light. Well, I asked the question, what does that mean? You are now in the light. You are now in the Lord and walk as children. What, what does that actually mean? That means that when you confess the name of Jesus and you believe, not just confess it, and don't, don't forget this, it's not just confession. It's believing, believing that Jesus, because he died for you and I, because he is the living word of God. He is the word that became flesh. And because he died for you, he took away everything about the darkness, the sin nature of us practicing sin. It doesn't mean that we don't fall short of the glory of God. What it simply means is because we represent the light of the world, that in this physical body called the tent, that there's still some darkness in our minds that you struggle with every day. And so this light helps us, the word of God, strengthens us to bear up. It fortifies you because why? Because just like you sit down and eat dinner and you have lunch or you have breakfast or you eat something, praise God, as little as it might be or too much as it might be, but whatever it is, you need this word. You need the spirit of God to then graft you, to fill you up, that you have a hunger for the more of God, that you can study and, and fast and study and pray and commune in the presence of God, because that light that you are needs the oil. The oil, in this case, represents the, the spirit of God. And so we have this, this teaching that's telling us that we are the children of light. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. This is Ephesians 5, 8 through 10. Now, this is representative of the Old Testament, Exodus 25. <laughs> that the same word is true. The same word is the righteousness of God. As we discovered a couple of weeks ago in the teaching, that, that truth is rooted in righteousness. The foundation of truth. Um, excuse me, the foundation of righteousness is rooted in truth. God's word is the truth. So the truth comes first because it's by believing the righteousness of God and the right ways of God and the right standards of God that, that we're able to navigate morally what's right from wrong because his word is true and it, it shall accomplish what he sent it and it shall not return unto him void. And so the righteousness represents the, the, the clarity of mind that you want the more of God's word, the truth, that it fortifies, that it strengthens you, that you're standing on this solid rock. This rock is the solid rock of salvation. It's the solid rock of the word of God. It's the rejected stone. So when you feel rejected, think about Jesus who who bore all of our sins and never mumbled a not a single word. And he didn't complain. He just went on and, and died for you and I. Took he was abused, chastised, neglected. He was rebuked by all of us. We esteemed him not. In other words, the light of the world walked on this earth and mankind could not accept him. So when you feel rejected, that's a spirit of rejection. That spirit that comes, it's a wicked spirit because rejection makes you feel like you don't belong. So you're going to work harder to prove something or you need permission or you need validation. That's a wicked spirit. That's, that's the device of the devil that he wants you to remain in darkness and not trust God's word. And so we're finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. His light is to be seen in your attitude, in your continence, in your behavior, in your conversation. And when I say continence, I am talking about what is your body language like? Not just that you're sitting there smiling, but behind the smile, there's a scroll, there's a, a bitterness, there's an anger. You're praying, but you're hateful. 
You, you're praying, but you're unforgiving. You, you're praying and going to church, people of God, and, and, and just like the Sadducees and the Pharisees and, and the different sects of Jewish community that, uh, that we're studying the book of Acts, that we discover the Hellenistic Jews and uh, the Libertines. And, and so all of these different individuals, they, had, they weren't of the original Israelites. And so because the, the children of Israel were growing and multiplying. So when you get blessed, expect the enemy to try to attack you because it always has attacked. Anything that God is doing, is you're going to get an attack because you're the beacon of light. You are God's chosen elect. And if he suffered and you, and you claim and you confess and you really believe in your heart, that, that he arose and then trust and believe that you have to die daily of your selfish desires to make sure that you're lining up your will, that God can use you to be that candle of hope, that bridge over troubled water, that beacon of light shining forever brightly. Ah, then don't put no bushel over it. Don't let your sin nature come back and, and trick you. Don't, don't let the snares of the follower, uh, the, uh, and the snares of the follower is the tricks of the devil. But Jesus comes to lead us out of darkness. <laughs> so this candle of the Lord, the oil, represents the light of God. Here's some other uh, key points to remember about the candlestick and the oil, and it represents the light of God. The bright light of God is the Shekinah glory of God. The righteousness of God and the light of Christ. That's what the candlestick represents. It represents his redeeming power. How so? Because from grace through Jesus Christ, who reconciled us out of darkness and promised and gave us the gift of eternal life. That's called salvation. So he judged us. Yes, he did. He judged us. Amen. And then he reconciles us because Jesus paid the price for the sins. It's called propitiation, that something was out of balance. And so we had to, he had to come and, and put things back in balance. But his grace, in other words, the glory of God was so powerful. The presence of God in the world is so powerful that we cannot absorb. Moses says, show me your face. And Jesus said, I'll show you the hind part as I pass by. You can see my glory because if you were to see my full glory, you, you, would, you would die. But here we have the presence of God that's telling us that I've given you the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My word became flesh. That is, Jesus now comes and has birthed through Mary, hallelujah, by immaculate conception, by the presence of God speaking into her and birthing himself in flesh in the name of Jesus. Mm. And he comes and reconciles our sins to redeem us. So the redeeming light or the redemption, and you are now the redeemed of the Lord because he has forgiven you of your sins and overshadowed your darkness and delivering you from your darkness and the darkest thoughts and the darkest depressions, the darkest moments of feeling like you can't go on. And then suddenly Jesus, the light of the world, the light shineth bright in you. Something quickens in you that transforms your mind and you become this new creature. This renewing of your mind by Christ, the renewing is the enlightenment of God's word that he, some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. It's symbolic of Jesus. It's the only light in our life, in our court, in our life, in our court, in, in this body. It's the only light that I really need is in me already. Everything that you need is in you because it's the seed of the word of God. It's the spirit, the living word of God. The candlestick represents, and it's pointing us always to the light, to know the more of Jesus. So when you get in those dark moments and you get depressed and you feel rejected, or you're going through just terrible situations of, of uh, calamities and death and unfortunate situations that, that you didn't do anything to deserve it, but multiple deaths in your family, 
multiple situations in your family. Divorce and separation from children and parents is painful. I've lived through it. And I grew up not really knowing my dad till I was grown. I was a teenager and visited him, but I really didn't have a relationship with him until I got to be out of college. I got a relationship with my daddy, with my father, and, and, and I'm, I'm reverently saying my father in heaven. Amen. Don't just call him daddy and then don't give him no time and no reverence, the holiness of who he is, because the candle of the Lord is the light of God. I told you we we're going to read some scriptures. So here we are, Exodus 25, 31 to 35, Exodus 25, 31 to 35, and thou shalt make a candle. These are the instructions given to Moses by God. That's why I'm telling you this word. If you can believe, if you can only believe that, that this Bible, this, this Bible, this, this book, this Bible, the harmony of the Gospels, it breaks down um, all the different scriptures. And most of this is written by Luke. And it's, it's discussing the, the gospel, the four gospels. It's revealing from the eyes of Luke. And so can you believe that the word of God, the spirit of God is a living word? Well, where did the paper come from to make this book? Hmm. He made all things for his what? For his glory. So God made everything for his glory. Everything is made for the glory of God. Everything is made for the glory of God. And so if he, if he made uh, the trees, he made them because he knew that it would bear fruit. That, that it would give us plants and it would cover the plants and you get oxygen from the greenery that's in the forest. But he also knew that we would need trees, the wood, to build. My God. He also gave man the ingenuity. Elohab, uh, who was called by Moses and told by God that by God, Moses was told by God to call a, 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 a Olahab and, and told him that he is gifted to, to train others. My God, they, they trained others. Moses didn't do all the training. Moses didn't do all the teaching. Moses went before God and got the message and had to go to Aaron and tell Aaron because he stuttered so badly he didn't want to be the leader. There are situations in your life that seem to be dark. There are situations that you're going through that you feel overwhelmed. And so I, I'm really working this, this lesson to help us understand the application of this word in modern day times, that no matter what you're going through, there's a light of hope if you can only believe that this Holy Spirit of God that dwells in you, that's all around you, that's nigh you all the time, omnipresent, omnipotent, <laughs> omnipotent, everywhere at the same time, all power in his hand, all knowing. <laughs> you don't have to say, Jesus, come by here. He's standing at the door. You don't have to say, Jesus, go to the jail, go visit my aunties. Jesus, thank you. I know you're already there. Pray with confirmation because this light has taught us, this word has taught us that if you are teaching by the word of God, it will help somebody. It will help you too. Hallelujah. There are things that I cannot explain. I cannot explain. I can't make, I can't change it, but I know who can. And so I believe, brothers and sisters, that this, this word, this word, this spirit, of God is not just a mustard seed. It is believing just enough of Jesus. He didn't ask you to read the whole Bible, comprehend everything you can't. All he wants is a sincere heart and a willingness to surrender yourself to him and reverence who he is and adore him. Don't just come asking for stuff and, and knocking at the door of Jesus and praying out loud and never want to obey the will of God. And he keeps forgiving us. He keeps, there's a remnant in the land. 
We're going to be talking about that tomorrow at 2 o'clock. The remnant is in the land. The God has a remnant right now in this world. He has people in this world who have a light of God, of hope in them. They have the spirit of God, of so much faith that God is using them to change situations. We don't see it all the time. But if you listen to the Holy Spirit and listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit more, we'll begin to see the changes. We saw one. I truly believe somebody said, and I'm diverting, but talking about light and darkness. It's in the church too. There are some people that wanted uh, certain people to win the election. There's some other people that didn't want them. Stand on truth. And so when you stand on truth, doesn't mean you're going to always win. Doesn't always mean it's going to go the way you want it to go. But I come to tell you, if you wait on the Lord and be a good courage, that light, that light, it's going to reveal and it's going to correct. It's going to confound the mind of the wicked because the hand and the mind of the king is in the hand of God who turns the river that changes the climates. He's in control of everything. So we have power by this light. Who is Jesus? Who is God? Who is the Holy Spirit that's in you? That this, this book, this Bible, is the living word of God. Spiritually speaking, it is literally the word of God that can change your natural circumstances. Your natural circumstances in your mind are there to keep you from being all that you can be for Christ. Because you can't get what God has for you in this natural body. You have to get on your, on your knees, and some of us can't get on the knees like we used to. So the knees don't always represent just being on your knees, but it means we surrender. Have you, have you let your, your negativity go? Leave it at the altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Ah, let me get back. Let me get back to some more. Ah, I'll share, share a little bit more with you. I, I get excited, brothers and sisters in Christ, because it's a joy to teach the word of God. So, so Exodus 25, 31, Exodus 25, 31, thou shalt make a candle out of gold, pure gold. A beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowl, his knobs, his flowers shall be the same. He, he's talking like this is a thing, that this thing is a human being. Listen to this. And thou shalt make a candle of your gold and works and, and beaten the works shall the candle be made. His shaft, his shaft, <laughs> his branches, your branches, our branches, our arms, our body, our entirety is made by the hand of God. He scooped you out of dirt. He took the same gold out of dirt of the earth and shaped you. Shape the candle of the Lord. You are the candle of the Lord. <laughs> and the pressure that you're experiencing, <laughs> that's the gold being purified in you, baby. It's the, it's the brother and sister. It's the, it's the light of God that's got to come out. You can cover it and smother it, and you can die in this flesh, and your soul will go to hell. And folks don't want to teach that, but that's true. You can't get caught up in man and man's philosophies and ideologies. You got to trust God. Don't follow me, but follow me as I teach this word of God, as I follow God, as I follow Jesus, by believing the Holy Ghost, the triune God. Follow the, the people that are teaching of this word, who live it, who, who try to do the best. Doesn't mean that they're perfect. Amen. And so the knobs and the flowers shall all be the same. The six branches shall come out of the side. Three branch on one side, three on the other. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Three bowls that were made unto almonds and, and, and a knob and a flower on one branch. So that each bowl had almonds, a knob, and the flower. Mm. Three bowls made like almonds in other branches as well. And it was formed the same way in the stem or in the shaft of the of the of the uh, menorah, the candlestick, and so these branches and these knobs are formed all over. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You can read this, and I'm going to break this down. The 66 parts of the candle also represents divine instruction of God. Well, what what are you saying? It also represents the 66 books of the Bible. 
One main shaft, four bowls, four knobs, four flowers, six branches, three bowls, three knobs, three flowers. And you can look this up. This is in Numbers uh, 17, 1 to 13. The seven bowls filled with pure oil. The pure oil, we're going to talk about that in the coming week. Uh, the crushing that you have to go through. The, the, the making of the, 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 the herbs that were on the altar for a sweet smell, the incense that filled the aroma, filled the, the aroma filled the room of the holy court because it's the, the herbs, the frankincense and the, and the uh, um, cinnamon uh, and, and other herbs that were made on Nica. And we're going to go through those herbs in the coming week, maybe next week, week after. We're going to break that down to show how that represents Jesus, how it represents how they beat our Jesus, how you going through pressure and, and your prayers become a sweet smell in the nostrils of God because your prayers enter the presence in the heavenly realm with God when they're sincere. Otherwise, I ain't going to heal, heal, heal. Remember, this is the only light the only hope we have, that's what this is saying. The only light, which is the light of God, which is all that we need, that's all that they had in there that could open up and, and give light to show them where they were in that small confinement. And the showbread or the bread of life, they could now see it. Each, each, the, the showbread, the, the, the bread of life, you had, to, you had to come to Jesus to get the bread. Woo -hoo! You, you can't get the bread in the darkness of your mind. You can only get the bread when you're in the presence of God. That's why he said, and he feeds us, I'll sit you in a heavenly place and reveal. That's what the eating of this word does. The priest represents, uh, the 12 loaves represent each of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's symbolic because that was that was the children, that was the favorite children, but born out of them, out of out of uh David, uh, out of the loins of David, we Jesus is born. Out of out of uh, uh who was that Boaz and Ruth. Hallelujah. David is born <laughs> through the gene, through the generations of time. Jesse, all the line and the lineages is the light of God in us. Just as important in understanding the cleaning uh, of the most of these precious uh, furnitures, the gold altar of incense was located in the center. So we're talking about three different pieces of furniture, the candlestick or the menorah. We talked about the showbread. And, and now just to mention real quick, the holy place of altar of, of prayer, the altar of prayer, the altar of incense located in the center, the closest to the heart. It represented when the, when the high priest had on the vestiture, the ephod with the stones, uh, 12 stones represent the 12 tribes, 12 stones represent the 12 tribes. So the high priest went in with his, his vestments on except for the ones, the only time he didn't wear was on the Day of Atonement. Then he would just put on another robe. And, but otherwise, he always wore 12 stones in the, in the ephod because what it represented was the power of God through the children of Israel, that the Ark of the Covenant was with them. Don't ever forget that. And so we are not children of, of Israel directly. We're called Gentiles out of the seed of Abraham, that, that because of the faithfulness of Abraham to offer up his son, and they were living in a dark time then, but he was willing to, and God gave a, a ram in the bush <laughs> that became the sacrifice, the sac that Jesus became the sacrifice, the lamb becomes, the ram becomes the sacrifice so that Isaac wasn't slain by his father who was willing to offer him up. Mm. But the light of the world will direct you of what to do, how to do, when to do. And so from the moment you confess Jesus, you enter into what's called the threshing floor. The threshing floor that separates you. 
it's a peeling away, a pulling away, that spiritually there's a shifting, a transformation of your mind that separates you from the common man and living and operating in bondage of sin. So it doesn't mean that I'm pure. It doesn't mean that you and I won't make mistakes. What it's simply saying is that I'm not living in the nature of sin every day. The things that I used to do, I just don't do no more. And now I'm thirsting for the more that I become even more disciplined with my studies. That's what I'm asking you to do. This golden altar of incense where, where um, there's a crown around this as well as a crown around the table of showbread. So once you're in the hand of God and you really have committed your heart to God, and only one that knows that is between you and God. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This ain't no water baptism. You can get water baptized all you want. But until you believe this in your heart and take it and live it, that there's a transformation that you are producing the fruit of kindness and gentleness of love, of temperance and understanding and wisdom, that there's so much to learn in this word. At the altar of incense, you're not only in God's presence, but you're leaning and you're laying down prospered or you're meditating uh, that, that, that the heart of God, the center of the holy court, that you're in his presence. It is in this position, position of sincerity of the effectual fervent heart that God, Jesus, allows us to enter into the most holy place. And into the holies of holies. You can't even get into the holies of holies without first coming to the altar, coming and being in the light, eating of this bread, and letting the prayers and the meditation of your heart be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That God ushers us into another realm and a quickening of his Holy Spirit. It's a regenerating from the old man to be a new man. But then there's a refreshing a quickening, uh, an epiphany, as some people would say, that you've had a being, something goes on, and, and you change for the better. Praying, praising, worshiping God, knowing God's word and meditating on it, and, and being a man or woman of God, a Christian who believes, Christian believing in the word of God, walking in the spirit of maturity. These pieces of furniture represent sacred embodiments of our triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. It represents the sacred embodiment of who you are in Christ. Why do you say that? Because you are the light of the, word, of the world. You eat of this word, which is the bread of life. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit speaks to you, guides you, and through the triune God and the Holy Spirit, the comforter, also gives you the ability to discern, to hear the leading, to hear the voice of our shepherd, to hear Jesus speak to me. So, so these are, these are uh, uh, so let's remember, let me give another piece of this, is the power of God rests within the inner spirit of all believers. This is, the, this is understanding the correlation of the golden furniture, the three pieces of furniture that I'm talking about, is, is having a relationship that the power of God rests within you. We must reverence and honor our bodies as, sac as sacred temples and, and dwelling place of God, that the light of God is present. It's the Holy Spirit. It's, not, it's the ark of the covenant that's in you. The power of God is no longer being carried in the ark with some poles. It's in you. You are the embodiment. You represent the, the, the embroidering of these courts is within you. The sacredness and the beauty of God's holiness is given to each one of us a measure of it. It's your gifts. It's your anointing. It's your calling. It's like having on the whole arm of God that you can't put on. You don't put it on. It's already given to you. It's already there. We just got to learn how to walk in it. We got to learn how to operate in it. Got to learn how to live with it and in it. 
because it's the breath of God. It's the presence of God. The same God who wrote his, with his fingers the tablet of the Ten Commandments that now has placed in your heart, imparted, imputed his word into you. That light of God who rains down showers you with blessings, with peace of mind, a quickening to renew you, sit you in a heavenly place because you've been dwelling, eating this bread, thirsting for the more of our God. Hallelujah. So the, the almond bud, the flower, represents the anointing and the fruitfulness. <laughs> because I mentioned to you earlier that the almond is the first uh, plants that, that bloom. And there's more to it. Let me, let me pull up something for you. Hallelujah. There's something that I'm, uh, some new things that I, uh, I'm actually discovering. And I want to share that with you if I can for just a minute. Hallelujah. There's just so much to learn. I got to get off because I'm watching my time too. And, and so I, I want us to, if I can find this, here it is here. I need to blow this up a little bit. You won't see this on the screen, but I'm talking to you because I, I, I want you to understand that what the almond represent, it signifies that God is watching you. <laughs> God is watching you. Mm. Jeremiah 1 and 11 through 12 says, Moreover, the word came unto me, this is Jeremiah, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then the Lord said unto them, to him, to me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten my word to perform it. In other words, the word that what you saw, what he saw, my God today, my God today. I, I want to I wanna break that down some more. Give me a second, y'all. Hallelujah. I'm hearing something. I'm seeing something. Yes, 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 yes. Glory to God. This is, this is the light of God that's shining the call. The word of, of the Lord came to me, came to Jeremiah, verse 4, when um, Jeremiah 1. And we're talking about the almond that God sees and knows you, even from the foundation of time. I'm reading our New Living Translation, the word of God in Jeremiah 1. Four, Jeremiah 1, 4, the word of the Lord came to me saying, and the word of God will come to you. That me is, is referencing you too. Before I formed you I, in the womb, I knew you. This is God talking to us. I knew you before you were born. I set apart, I appointed you as a prophet, Jeremiah. I, I appointed you whoever you are, to be a servant of the Most High God. I appointed you to be the candles of the Lord. I, I have chosen and made you in my image. And my, yeah, yeah. I appointed you. I've assigned you. I've given you power and authority. And so at last, Sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, the Lord is saying to you, do not say that I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to. First of all, what he's teaching us about the word of God is regardless to your circumstances, when you hear the voice of God, he will guide you and protect you and give you what to do, what to say, and when to say it. If you wait on the Lord and be of good courage, you must go to everyone that I send you to. In other words, in order for you to go to everyone that he sends you to, you got to hear the commandments. And say whatever I commanded you. So you got to hear. That's what the light of God is. Being able to hear. Because he enlightens you. Be not afraid of them. For I am with you. The Lord reached out of his hand. And touched my mouth. And said to me. I put my words in your mouth. See today. I appointed you over nations and kings. To uproot. To tear down. To destroy. To overthrow. To build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me, said, what do you see? <laughs> I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said, you have seen correctly. I am watching to see. I am watching to see. The almond in the Hebrew watching sounds like the Hebrew word almond tree. 
Now, this is, this is not Anton's interpretation. This is the word of God. And we're in Jeremiah 1 and 12, where it says, the Lord said, you have seen. See, God doesn't just speak to you. He'll give you revelation to see. For I am watching you to see that the word is fulfilled. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling. I answered, it's tilting towards us from the north. The Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will pour out upon all, the, all who live in the land. I am about to consume all the people of the northern kingdom, declares the Lord. So, so there, are, there are words in, this, in this, the spirit of God, the word of God, the teaching of God's word, that he pronounces judgment on the children of Israel in the northern kingdom. And he tells Jeremiah, get ready, stand up. I, I, I didn't want to go there, but God, the Holy Spirit took me there. Stand up, you all, for I have commanded you. Get yourself ready. Stand up. Say to them whatever I command you. God is saying to you and I, I command you to do my will. I've given you divine instructions, the same as I gave Moses on how to build the tabernacle. I've given you instructions on how to live your life for my glory. People will fight against you, verse 19. People will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you. Because the eyes of the Lord look to and through uh, and through and all over, and he's a seeing God, I'm going to close. <laughs> I've never had this revelation before that the eyes of God represent the almond. I never saw that like that. I saw the quickening. I saw the light, but I did not understand what he says is that the eyes of God are upon you, and he'll give you eyes to be able to recognize your enemies. And don't be afraid of them. He told them, don't look at one of them. Keep your eyes on, on the things that God has told you. Keep your mind stayed on it. I'm going to reveal some things to you. That's what the light of God is. He said, today I made you a fortified city. Remember, he said, I am a high tower. Jesus, God is, the, is, is our strength. He is our pillar. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the, for the word, for the word, for the teaching of this candle. Here's, the, here's an example of that candlestick. I put it on the screen right now. Now, this is, a, this is the candle. This, this is the main, see these little knobs? If you go look up almonds, these little round things represent those almonds. And these, these uh, bowls are where the oil is. And so each one of these parts are very clear. And can you imagine this beautiful candle was made out of pure, just a, a 75 pounds of gold, just a lump of gold that got, then had to be heated. What kind of furnace and fires did they have? They didn't have what we have today. But they were able to melt this and purify this gold to the satisfaction of what God called Moses to tell them to do. God is calling us. And that takes me to the announcement for, uh, for tomorrow. Uh, we're having a, a round table discussion tomorrow on the remnant, on the remnant, oh Jesus, on the remnant of God's word, that there's a remnant, what's the remnant? The leftovers. <laughs> that there's a population of God's people that are in the world today, that are in the, that are in the world, that are with us right now. And that, that population of, of people, this is for tomorrow, Wednesday, and I'm trying to open up the, the flyer for you. Uh, that's tomorrow. And so, so when, when we think of the goodness of the Lord and, and his mercy, I just want you all to know that we serve an awesome God. 
We serve a God that cannot fail. We, we serve a God to, tomorrow. We're going to be talking with, with five different guests about the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the presence of God in our lives that says that, that we're able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Well, this is a conference that's coming up. Uh, I don't know if you can see this on the screen, uh, but this is uh, the conference that we're having uh, Apostle uh, Stephanie Paya is, is going to host that. And so we're looking forward to uh, being a part of that as well. It's so much great things that God is doing that I, I just want you all to know that we serve an awesome God. And so this is, I'm in the wrong place. This is Thursday. <laughs> Got so much going on. God has blessed us, you all, that, that we're doing. I need some help. I need some, I need some help. Hallelujah. I need the hand of God to move in a mighty way uh, so that, that all of you will come to know that we serve God and we're not ashamed of this gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, uh, Screen sharing has stopped as a show. Okay. So we're, we're going to close out and just give God all the praise, all the honor, all of the glory. For I, I do thank God for what he's doing in my life, what he's doing in your life. Uh, I pray that something that I have said uh, will bless you and that you will uh, give your life even the more to Jesus. Uh, I just want to share this with you as I close and, and ask you to pray for us, uh, and we'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Uh, tomorrow, my guests are on tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday the 16th. Tomorrow the 16th, we're going to be showing, a uh, hosting a conference. Uh, it's really not a conference. It's the, the Tabernacle of Worship International Every Wednesday we're on, and we have some guests from local here, and Pastor Stephan Edgar Paya uh, from Ghana is the president of the uh, Africa Council of Ministers Network, and and we uh, we invited other guests, pastors from here, uh, Apostle Ali, he calls Apostle Ali Dixon, R. Dixon, Sending Ali Outreach Ministries, uh, he refers and calls her reverently mother, the spiritual mother. Hallelujah. And I met him through uh, Apostle Ali Dixon and Pastor St. John Chisholm, whom I've known for over 40 years. Uh, he and co-pastor Gay Chisholm, uh, they introduced me to, to him just by the grace of God. And I was led of the Holy Spirit to just start a prayer. Then uh, I did that. And he told me to do the podcast and do one on Wednesdays at two o'clock change the times and so that people from different parts of the world can be on and not be up in the middle of the night as your special guest. And this this man of God, Apostle uh, Pastor Stephen Edgar Apaya from Ghana, uh, wrapped his arms around me and, and just works with me to give us guest speakers every week. So this week, I want him to meet some of my closest friends along with um, a, a new friend, Apostle Ali Dixon, uh, Pastor Julius of Washington. We go back 30 plus years. Uh, so these men of God have stood with me and, and I wanted us to talk to, as the Lord gave me what to do, what the theme is, what the scriptures are, to talk about the remnant of God in the land today. The remnant of God is in the land today. Are we listening it's going to be a round table discussion, and it's going to be focused out of some scripture text that I've shared with them, uh, Isaiah 10, and, and reminding us how God always came back to help the children of Israel. And Jesus is always standing near and nigh thee, calling us to draw closer to him. And I want you to know that I truly believe that the Holy Spirit of God Jesus is speaking to the world today because people are falling further and further away. And there's still a remnant of us who believe in our hearts that God is coming back. 
And our assignment for the rest of our lives is to spread the gospel and to encourage and to nourish by teaching this word of God. So I ask you to join me. This is Elder Anton Seals. We'll be on tomorrow. This will be another Zoom. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with me, there's a phone number, 773-234-3108. You can go to our Facebook page. You can go to our AJS Ministry uh, uh, website at the bottom right up under the phone number here. And you can uh, share a seed if you'd like, sow a seed. Um, but and, and we're 501c3. We just thank God for every opportunity to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. You'll be hearing more and more and more and more as we go forward in the teaching of God's word. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being on. We've been on about an hour. Uh, we got on about 310. Uh, but I want to thank Brother Clarence Brown for being on and being faithful to uh, just being so encouraging. And God bless he and his wife. She celebrated her birthday. So and and just how God just comforted both of them as they went through some loss of friends and loved ones. Uh, three lovely people all in succession in, in three days. And they have gone to three different uh, funerals. But praise God, they know who God is. And they know who they are in Christ Jesus. You need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. This is your host, Elder Anton Seals. In the absence of his wife, Elder Jennifer Seals, we thank God for AJS ministry, anointed by Jesus to serve. Yes, we say Anton and Jennifer Seals ministry, but it's really anointed by Jesus to serve in his ministry. Anointed by Jesus to serve in ministry. That's what AJS ministry really means. Hallelujah. God bless you. Peace and blessings. We'll be out next week. And next week we'll talk about um, the showbread and the uh, altar of incense and how uh, at the altar of incense, uh, where we meet Jesus in prayer, uh, is anywhere in that room, but there's a sacred prayer that he calls us to. There's a, a silent prayer that he calls us to, uh, just between he and I, you and him. And I want to help you get there. I want you to, I want you to thirst the more and share the word and what the word says about you being a sweet smell in his nostril and to be all right with the suffering that you're going through. Be all right with it because the joy comes in the morning. God bless you. I love you with the love of Jesus. Ain't nothing you can do about it, but spread some more love. Spread some more love, people of God. Take care until we meet again next, uh, well, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Tomorrow, uh, that's uh, Chicago Standard Time or Central Standard Time. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. Blessings of the Lord be with you. This is your host, Elder Anton Seals. Sign